a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. The Beach Boys The Beach Boys are an American rock band formed in Hawthorne, California, in 1961. The group's original lineup consisted of brothers Brian, Dennis, and Carl Wilson, their cousin Mike Love, and their friend Al Jardine. Distinguished by their vocal harmonies and early surf songs, they are one of the most influential acts of the rock era. The band drew on the music of jazz-based vocal groups, 1950s rock and roll, and black R&B, to create their unique sound, and with Brian as composer, arranger, producer, and de facto leader, often incorporated classical or jazz elements, and unconventional recording techniques in innovative ways. The Beach Boys began as a garage band, managed by the Wilson's father Murray, with Brian's musicianship dominating their creative direction. In 1963, they gained national prominence, with a string of top ten hits reflecting a Southern California youth culture of surfing, cars, and romance, later dubbed the California Sound. After 1964, they abandoned beach-going themes for more personal lyrics and ambitious orchestrations. In 1966, the Pet Sounds album and Good Vibrations single raised the group's prestige as rock innovators and established the band as symbols of the nascent counterculture era. Following the dissolution of the group's Smile Project in 1967, Brian gradually ceded production and songwriting duties to the rest of the band, reducing his input because of mental health and substance abuse issues. The group's commercial momentum subsequently faltered, and despite efforts to maintain an experimental sound, they were dismissed by early rock critics as the archetypal pop music cop-outs. Carl took over as the band's musical leader until the late 1970s. Personal struggles, creative disagreements, and the continued success of the band's greatest hits albums precipitated their transition into an oldies act. Since the 1980s, much publicized legal wrangling over royalties, songwriting credits and use of the band's name transpired. Dennis drowned in 1983, and Carl died of lung cancer in 1998. After Carl's death, many live configurations of the band fronted by Mike Love and Bruce Johnston continued to tour into the 2000s while other members pursued solo projects. Even though Wilson and Jardine have not performed with Love and Johnston's band since their one-off 2012 reunion tour, they remain a part of the Beach Boys Corporation, Brother Records Incorporated. The Beach Boys are one of the most critically acclaimed, commercially successful, and widely influential bands of all time. The group had over 80 songs chart worldwide, 36 of them US Top 40 hits, four reaching number one on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. The Beach Boys have sold in excess of 100 million records worldwide, making them one of the world's best-selling bands of all time and are listed at number 12 on Rolling Stone magazine's 2004 list of the 100 greatest artists of all time. In 2017, a study of All Music's catalog indicated the Beach Boys as the sixth most frequently cited artist influence in its database. The core quintet of the three Wilsons, Love and Jardine were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1988. 1958-1961, Formation At the time of his 16th birthday on June 20, 1958, Brian Wilson shared a bedroom with his brothers, Dennis and Carl aged 13 and 11, respectively in their family home in Hawthorne. He had watched his father, Murray Wilson, play piano, and had listened intently to the harmonies of vocal groups such as the Four Freshmen. After dissecting songs such as, Ivory Tower, and, Good News, Brian would teach family members how to sing the background harmonies. For his birthday that year, Brian received a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. He learned how to overdub, using his vocals and those of Carl and their mother. Brian played piano with Carl and David Marks, an 11-year-old longtime neighbor, playing guitars they had each received as Christmas presents. Soon Brian and Carl were avidly listening to Johnny Otis' KFOX radio show. Family gatherings brought the Wilsons in contact with cousin Mike Love. Brian taught Love's sister Maureen and a friend Harmonies. Later, Brian, Love and two friends performed at Hawthorne High School. Brian also knew Al Jardine, a high school classmate. Brian suggested to Jardine that they team up with his cousin and brother Carl. Love gave the fledgling band its name, the Pendletones, a pun on Pendleton, a style of woolen shirt popular at the time. 
Dennis was the only avid surfer in the group, and he suggested that the group write songs that celebrated the sport and the lifestyle that it had inspired in Southern California. Brian finished the song, titled, Surfing, and with Mike Love, wrote, Surfing Safari. Murray recalled, They had written a song called Surfing, which I never did like and still don't like, it was so rude and crude. Murray Wilson, who was a sometime songwriter, arranged for the Pendletons to meet his publisher Height Morgan. He said, finally, Height, agreed to hear it. And Mrs. Morgan said drop everything, we're going to record your song. I think it's good. And she's the one responsible. On September 15, 1961, the band recorded a demo of, Surfing, with the Morgans. A more professional recording was made on October 3rd, at World Pacific Studio in Hollywood. David Marks was not present at the session as he was in school that day. Murray brought the demos to Herb Newman, owner of Candix Records, and Dira Records, and he signed the group on December 8. When the single was released a few weeks later, the band found that they had been renamed The Beach Boys. Candix wanted to name the group The Surfers until Russ Regan, a young promoter with Era Records, noted that there already existed a group by that name. He suggested calling them The Beach Boys. Surfing was a regional hit for the West Coast, and reached number 75 on the national Billboard Hot 100 chart. It was so successful that the number of unpaid orders for the single bankrupted Candix. Surfing Safari, Surfing USA Surfer Girl, and Little Deuce Coop By this time the de facto manager of the Beach Boys, Murray landed the group's first paying gig on New Year's Eve, 1961, at the Ritchie Valens Memorial Dance in Long Beach. In their earliest public appearances, the band wore heavy wool jacket-like shirts that local surfers favored before switching to their trademark striped shirts and white pants. In early 1962, Morgan requested that some of the members add vocals to a couple of instrumental tracks that he had recorded with other musicians. This led to the creation of the short-lived group Kenny and the Cadets, which Brian led under the pseudonym, Kenny. The other members were Carl, Jardine, and the Wilson's mother Audrey. In February, Jardine left the Beach Boys to study dentistry and was replaced by David Marks. Murray remembered that after, surfing, the group had a difficult time being picked up by another label. They, all, thought, the group was, a one-shot record. After being turned down by Dot and Liberty, the Beach Boys signed a seven-year contract with Capitol Records. This was at the urging of Capitol executive and staff producer Nick Vennett who signed the group, seeing them as the teenage gold he had been scouting for. On June 4, 1962, the Beach Boys debuted on Capitol with their second single, Surfing Safari, backed with 409. The release prompted national coverage in the June 9 issue of Billboard, which praised Love's lead vocal and said the song had strong hit potential. Surfing Safari rose to number 14 and found airplay in New York and Phoenix, a surprise for the label. The Beach Boys completed their first album, Surfing Safari, with production credited to Nick Vennett. Carl later denied that Vennett had any significant role in the group's early music, saying that Vennett would be in the booth, and he would call the take number, and that was about it. I wouldn't call him a musical heavy by any. Brian didn't want anything to do with Vennett. Surfing Safari, released in October 1962, was unusual. From other rock albums of the time in that it consisted almost entirely of original songs, primarily written by Brian with Mike Love and friend Gary Usher. Another unusual feature of the Beach Boys was that, although they were marketed as surf music, their repertoire bore little resemblance to the music of other surf bands, which was mainly instrumental, and incorporated heavy use of spring reverb. For this reason, some of the Beach Boys' early local performances had young audience members throwing vegetables at the band, believing that the group were posers. In January 1963, the Beach Boys recorded their first top 10 single, Surfing USA, which began their long run of highly successful recording efforts. It was during the sessions for this single that Brian made the production decision from that point on to use double tracking on the group's vocals, resulting in a deeper and more resonant sound. The album of the same name followed in March and reached number two on the Billboard charts. Its success propelled the group into a nationwide spotlight, and was vital to launching surf music as a national praise. 
albeit the Beach Boys' vocal approach to the genre, not the original instrumental style pioneered by Dick Dale. Biographer Luis Sanchez highlights the Surfing USA single as a turning point for the band, Crete Ing, a direct passage to California life for a wide teenage audience, and a distinct Southern California sensibility that exceeded its conception as such to advance right to the front of American consciousness. Five days prior to the release of the Surfing USA album, Brian produced Surf City, a song he had written for Jan and Dean. Surf City hit number one on the Billboard charts in July, a development that pleased Brian, but angered Murray, who felt his son had given away what should have been the Beach Boys' first chart topper throughout 1963, and for the next few years, Brian produced a variety of singles for outside artists. Among these were The Honeys, a surfer trio that comprised sisters Diane and Marilyn Ravel with cousin Ginger Blake. Brian was convinced that they could potentially be a successful female counterpart to the Beach Boys, and he produced a number of singles for them, although they could not replicate the Beach Boys' popularity. He also attended some of Phil Spector's sessions at Gold Star Studios. His creative and songwriting interests were revamped upon hearing the Ronettes' 1963 song, Be My Baby, which was produced by Spectre. The first time he heard the song was while driving, and was so overwhelmed that he had to pull over to the side of the road and analyze the chorus. Later, he reflected, I was unable to really think as a producer up until the time where I really got familiar with Phil Spector's work. That was when I started to design the experience to be a record rather than just a song. Surfer Girl marked the first time the group used outside musicians on a substantial portion of an LP. Many of them were the musicians Spectre used for his wall of sound productions. To close 1963, the band released a standalone Christmas-themed single, Little Saint Nick, backed with an a cappella rendition of the scriptural song, The Lord's Prayer. The A-side Pete did number three on the US Billboard Christmas chart, British Invasion, Shut Down, All Summer Long, and Christmas Album. The surf music craze, along with the careers of nearly all surf acts, was slowly replaced by the British Invasion. Following a successful Australasian tour in January and February 1964, the Beach Boys returned home to face their new competition, The Beatles. Both groups shared the same record label in the US, and capital support for The Beach Boys immediately began waning. This caused Murray to fight for the band and the label more than before, often visiting their offices without warning to twist executive arms. Carl said that Phil Spector was Brian's favorite kind of rock. He liked him better than the early Beatles stuff. He loved the Beatles' later music when they evolved and started making intelligent, masterful music, but before that Phil was it. According to Mike Love, Carl followed the Beatles closer than anyone else in the band, while Brian was the most rattled by the Beatles and felt tremendous pressure to keep pace with them. For Brian, the Beatles ultimately eclipsed a lot of what we'd worked for. They eclipsed the whole music world. Brian wrote his last surf song in April 1964. That month, during recording of the single, I Get Around, Murray was relieved of his duties as manager. He remained in close contact with the group and attempted to continue advising on their career decisions. When I Get Around was released in May, it would climb to number one, their first single, to do so, proving that the Beach Boys could compete with contemporary British pop groups. In July, the album that the song appeared on, All Summer Long, reached number four in the US. All Summer Long introduced exotic textures to the Beach Boys sound exemplified by the piccolos and xylophones of its title track. The album was a swan song to the surf and car music the Beach Boys built their commercial standing upon. Later albums took a different stylistic and lyrical path. Before this, a live album, Beach Boys Concert, was released in October, to a four-week chart stay at number one, containing a set list of previously recorded hits and covers that they had not yet recorded. In June 1964, Brian recorded the bulk of the Beach Boys' Christmas album with a 41-piece studio orchestra in collaboration with four freshman arranger Dick Reynolds. The album was a response to Phil Spector's A Christmas Gift For You. Released in December, the Beach Boys' album was divided between five new, original Christmas-themed songs and seven reinterpretations of traditional Christmas songs. It would be regarded as one of the finest holiday albums of the rock era. 
One single from the album, The Man With All The Toys, was released, peaking at number 6 on the US Billboard Christmas chart. On October 29, the Beach Boys performed for the TAMI show, a concert film intended to bring together a wide range of hit-making musicians for a one-off performance. The result was released to movie theaters one month later. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?